but there's still the question of why those teeth are so big in relation to the small skull. In humans, teeth evolve much more slowly than the rest of the body. It could be that as the islander's body shrank drastically from one generation to the next, their teeth simply didn't have time to catch up. In evolutionary terms, teeth are very slow to change, and that's probably why the teeth look big in the Palauan sample. They're actually still normal human size, they just haven't caught up with the tiny Palauan bodies yet. So what if these small people were once full-sized? Evidence shows that the earliest settlers arrived in Palau just three to four thousand years ago. Subsequent generations might have adapted to the harsh conditions, but it seems to have happened very quickly. This would mean that rather than humans evolving over tens of thousands of years, as previously thought, these little people could have changed drastically in size and shape in just a few hundred years. Experts say it's a rate of change that would have been considered impossible until now. If size and shape have changed in a human population over a few hundred years, we would have to start to rethink what we understand about the processes of evolutionary change as they apply to modern humans. Four days into their quest, and each bone fragment brings these tiny people more fully to life. But the scientists are struggling to keep up. The number and range of bones here is greater than anyone imagined. And that in itself is a mystery. With its collection of fossilized bodies, some largely intact and not widely scattered, the cave is looking less like a dwelling and more like a mausoleum. A mass burial site. A cemetery. And yet, Lee suspects that these are no ordinary graves. A cemetery population is just this. What you would expect to dig up if you dug up a cemetery regarding age ranges. And what would we expect? Well, well you're going to see lots of very young people and lots of very old people and very few people in the middle if the population is normal. When you look at a symmetry created during a period of catastrophe, say disease or war, you start getting all the age groups represented. It means something has gone on. This is exactly what Lee and the team are finding. Dozens of bodies that span all ages. So just what was this cataclysmic event? Was there a battle? Or maybe the resources started to run out. Hundreds of people scavenging the same shore would have to move further and further from home. Perhaps this, combined with a shift in climate, brought on a slow and desperate demise. There's another possibility. These people could have been wiped out by invaders. Remote islands are often short of resources, and visitors would have to either kill or be killed. A taller, stronger people may have moved in, such as the Austronesians who swept into the Philippines from China. Or was it ancestors of the modern Palauans who could have arrived to find the islands already occupied and turned on the cave dwellers as a source of food? Island populations of humans have to protect those very limited resources. The idea of people eating other people, cannibalism occurring in island populations, is a very real thing. Human beings might not have been the biggest threat on the island. The cave people could have faced something more dangerous than a warrior tribe. Mother Nature. On these islands, 
a tsunami could have been devastating. The entire population might have gathered in the cave to protect themselves and been wiped out in a single blow. Old bones would be buried in silt and seawater and coral and dead fish and debris. And new ones would be ripped apart and torn apart and then sucked down into that little shaft where we found those more complete specimens and there they jam against each other before being sucked down into even deeper chambers we haven't seen yet. This theory will soon be tested by a startling new discovery. But for now, the answers must wait as the main team prepares to leave the islands. For most of the scientists, this is the final day of excavation. But they still haven't removed the skull with the baby's jawbone attached. This nearly complete fossil will provide vital evidence of facial shape and brain size. It's too crucial a find to leave behind. The tide is moving out and there are only minutes to spare before they will be stranded on the island for the night. Lee turns to drastic measures in an attempt to free the skull. One slip could destroy the fragile face. After a week, the skull is finally cut free, revealing an almost complete brain cavity. It's a magnificent fossil. The team has plenty to celebrate. In just eight days, they've catalogued around 1,200 samples, plenty for further analysis. Right now, she goes straight to the museum, and we go relax for the evening, and think about what we've got, and then we have, then we have a lot of work to do. Samples will be sent to labs around the world for DNA and carbon dating. Those tests will help prove that these little people lived in modern times and strengthen the theory that they evolved from normal humans into these strange creatures. But before Lee returns to the United States, he wants to make the most of his short time left in Palau. Many of the surrounding islands contain caves. Most are flooded, giving little chance of finding evidence of habitation. good example of how the bone cave would have looked before the main roof collapsed. Sure, I mean, look at this. It could be anywhere in our cave. And then underwater, it just continues. You know, all those little shoots that go into the back, and you can see they're full of muck. Mm -hmm. But as this lowers, they're going to get blown out. And it's the same thing. Lee knows there must be more to discover. But with time running out, the chances of finding any more remains seem as remote as the islands themselves. But Roland Mira still believes that Palau has more secrets to share. I'm very positive that if we continue our studies to different islands, that we will find more information that benefit from the more old information. Since their arrival eight days ago, Lee Berger and his team have unearthed the discovery of a lifetime. The fossilized bones of small, bizarre-looking people who may have evolved more quickly than anyone had thought possible. But the island hasn't given up its secrets easily. The scientists will soon return to explore further. But for now, there's a feeling that what they've found is just the tip of the iceberg. <laughs>